Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and we are reviewing the latest episode of Disney Plus Star Wars Ahsoka Part 6 entitled Far, Far Away in an episode that is kind of a breather from what we received last week with the uh, return of Anakin and the Pergils and all that good stuff, the lightsaber battles. It, it was an exciting episode, and this was kind of an episode to sit back and just take a breath and, <laughs> you know, relax for 40 minutes, and it did an excellent job at it. I, I don't understand why the heads of Star Wars, Catherine Kennedy, uh, whoever else is the uh, shot callers over there, need to give Dave Filoni all of the Star Wars property and just let him just let him cook, man. This was an excellent episode. To say that it was not action heavy, to say that we only got a soca for what two, three minutes of the episode, and that was in the very beginning. And this was a very good episode, and we finally, finally get to feast our eyes on the big bad that we've been hearing about for five episodes prior. Even heard his name mentioned in the Mandalorian series, but this is finally the live action appearance, the first live action appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn, as well as Ezra Bridger. We get to see both of them in this episode. And I, I, look, <laughs> this was this was an episode where you don't know where this series is going. You know, after we left off last week, with uh, Ahsoka and Hugh Young being catapulted through space by the Pargills, not knowing where they're heading, not knowing where they're going, and just trusting the Force, uh, kind of left us on a bit of a cliffhanger, so to speak. And to pick up where it picked up, and we see Hugh Young and Ahsoka talking in the ship, and... You know, the back and forth between those two is excellent, man. I, and to cut away to Sabine on the ship being held captive and getting a kind of a throwback to when we saw Leia being held captive in A New Hope, you know, being in that jail cell and and the back and forth between Sabine and Balin and the, <laughs> and the hyperdrive ship arriving at the destination, at the planet where Grand Admiral Thrawn is being, uh, uh, well, was exiled to, along with Ezra Bridger, but he wasn't the main focus here. And so we get to the planet. We see the uh, three witches, which reminded me of a scene out of Macbeth, you know, (laughs) Shakespeare play. And the setup there that, you're seeking Thrawn and he's on the way he's coming and for the witches to look at Sabine and say, we sense Jedi in her was kind of a, that was kind of a big deal because it was set up in the first couple of episodes where, uh, Sabine is trying to use the force, but she doesn't really grasp it and can't use the force. She even tried it when she fought Shin and it didn't work. And basically indicating that she isn't force sensitive, but for the sisters, for the sister witches, I think that's what they call they 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 sense it in her, and pretty much take her capture, put her down in a dungeon, as uh, they await the arrival of Thrawn. And so we get a scene with Balin and Shin, where Balin is talking to Shin and. Uh, pretty much giving her information of his background, you know, telling his little history that he had, not his whole history, just in pieces. And I loved how this scene was written and acted because 
you could tell that Balin, even though Shin is his apprentice or Padawan, he hasn't told her much about his history. And so the little history that he gives her every now and then is like a shock to her. And it was beautifully acted by the actress. I can't think of her name who plays Shin. And my God, man, Ray Stevenson, RIP. Throughout this episode, Ray Stevenson gives one of the best performances of his career. And it hurt me. I really, I, my eyes welled up watching this episode thinking of what a talent we lost. What a talent. I've always been a huge fan of Ray Stevenson. You know, uh, all the films and television shows that he has popped up on throughout the years. And, you know, I was excited to see him in a Star Wars film and or or, or show, property, whatever. And so I was excited to see him in his show. And he passed away a few months ago before this show premiered. And, man... I wish he was alive. I wish he was alive so he can hear all the praise that he is getting. I, 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 I cannot express how much weight, how much uh, gravitas, should I say, that he gives in this performance. He isn't your mustache trailing villain. He's he's complicated and questions it makes you question if he's really a villain you know with his motives with the way he explains why he is doing what he's doing you kind of get a sense of oh i get it <laughs> you know i understand where he's coming from especially if you're older if you're an older person you know because i start to feel this way as you get older you start looking at the world differently and things that you used to believe things that you used to follow, things that you uh, traditionally used to uh, uh, heed to start looking kind of ridiculous. And, you know, the more you learn, the more, the wiser you get, you realize that that's not, this is not the way the world goes, <laughs> you know? And, and you look at the world differently and you, and you react differently. And he wants to do something about it. He wants to change these tropes of, you know, rinse wash repeat you know going through the same thing over and over and over again which we all could go through you know just look how the world works you know the world works yeah you think things are new things that popped up and you, you know like man we never experienced nothing like this before no we have we went through this it, it probably was a century ago but it happened before you know the way uh, uh, dictators rise to power every 50 or 100 years, you know, stuff like that. It, it's just a trope that goes on and on and on. But anywho's, he wants to do something about it, it, which is a noble effort. Do I agree with the way the means he he's taking? No, <laughs> no, but I understand. But the point I was trying to get before I went on that tangent, Ray Stevenson, <laughs> is doing God's work here, man. He is just chewing up the scenery here and is not boisterous. You know, he's so soft-spoken yet powerful at the same time. It's, it's amazing. Love his performance. Moving on, the very next scene, we get one of the greatest. It, I'm not even, I'm not blowing it out of proportion. I'm not speaking in hyperbole. This has to be one of the greatest introductions of a character I have ever seen. The visuals in this episode was outstanding. Oh my God, this looks so gorgeous. I'm watching it and I'm like, man, I wish, it, I, wish I could have seen this in a theater. I wish I could have seen this in IMAX or something. It looked beautiful on the TV that I was watching. And this entrance with the star destroyer coming up over the cliff and <laughs> just sitting on this uh little uh uh what what would you call it uh uh columns or temple or 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 
whatever. It it just fit perfectly over this little ridge where these uh, towers are. And you see his servants awaiting his arrival. You know, and we see the Knight Brothers in their little uh, gear, you know, imperial uh, attire. And, and the way that uh, the director of this episode, Jennifer Gidziggler, moves the camera to show him arriving, him walking through this uh, 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 imperial platoon is like, wow. <laughs> it was like, wow. And we get the reveal of Thrawn with the blue face and the red eyes. And you're like, oh, man. And, and Lars Mikkelsen, who voiced the character on Rebels, he did the voice acting for the animated series. So, you know, it was only fitting for him to be the character in live action. And that voice to come out. And you're like, oh, man, this takes me back. If you're a fan of Rebels, if you watch Rebels, it, it, it did nothing but tickle the good good spots. <laughs> in you. But, man, you talk about an entrance. Amazing. Loved it. Loved it. And so the witches uh, let Thrawn know that they have a prisoner, uh, that they uh, Balin and Morgan and Shin had brought a prisoner along with him. So they informed him that it is Sabine. And immediately he was like, oh, that's a that's a name that sounds familiar. You know, he knows her from Rebels, of course. So he asks to see her and uh, brings her up and uh, they have a nice back and forth. And I really loved the performance from the actress who plays Sabine. She it wasn't fear. She didn't fear him. It was more of disdain for him. You know, when she walked up to 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 talk to him or whatever. And she was expecting to be murdered or, or you know, uh tortured or whatever the case may be. But Thrawn uh tells her, like, look, I know your agreement you had with Balin. You said that Balin uh, promised you that you can find Ezra, that you can see Ezra. And so I'm going to honor that because because of you, I can get off of this planet. I can uh, uh, escape exile, which is the truth. Is This is all Sabine's fault because she didn't destroy the map. And so as an act of gratitude, I guess you could say, <laughs> she uh, uh, Thrawn lets her go, gives her her weapons, even the lifesaver, Gives her this uh, dog horse hybrid <laughs> to go search for Ezra. And she leaves out on that quest. And while she leaves, well, as she leaves, Thrawn tells Balin and Shin to follow her. And when she gets to Ezra, kill them both. You know, and they leave to go follow Sabine. So after that, Thrawn tells Morgan to say, <laughs> that he's sending a squad after them that after Balin and Shin kills Ezra and Sabine, the squad is to kill <laughs> Balin and Shin. And so he is uh, 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 planning to leave no stone unturned. <laughs> he is going to wipe that slate clean. Meanwhile, we have Sabine on her quest to find Ezra uh, she run across some nomads, and this is the one action sequence we have in this ep episode where the nomads attack Sabine. Uh, she used her Mandalorian Beskar to deflect the blasters. Uh, once she uh, is disarmed with her blaster, she picks up the lightsaber and remembers her training and <laughs> takes those nomads apart it, it was a nice nice scene and she continues on her quest and we get a cute little interaction with her uh her in this horse dog hybrid thing <laughs> where it was more like a dog and following her around and it was nice uh Balin and shin are on her trail they see, come across the nomads that she took apart and um, all of a sudden there are some other, uh, 
people there. I don't know what they were, but they was in this red kind of samurai looking attire. I don't know who they are, but uh, we leave them there. Meanwhile, Sabine and her little pet, they come across this. I don't know what this is, what you would call this, a turtle thing, <laughs> these rock turtle, whatever, beings. And uh, they recognize the insignia on her armor, which is the same symbol that they recognize from Ezra. And so they guide her to this village where we meet Ezra Bridger. And there's a nice interaction between Ezra and uh, Sabine. Um, they embrace and he tells her that he can't wait to go home. And there's this little moment, you know, just a quick little moment where Sabine kind of just looks down in shame because she knows, you know, well, actually he has said, he asked her, you know, how did you find me? And she really doesn't answer. She was like, Oh, don't worry about that. Or whatever. However she had put it, I'm paraphrasing. And the reality is, she she led these um, uh, 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 mercenaries to Thrawn, to where Thrawn can escape. And once he find that out, I'm I'm assuming next episode, it is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a serious problem. But he does tell her that he can't wait to return home. And we get another scene between Thrawn and Morgan, and the episode ends. I am so excited. And the reason I'm so excited, yeah, we got two episodes remaining of this season, but you can tell that there's more. It, it's going to stretch past these two episodes. I don't know if it's going to be a movie because they already announced that Dave Filoni will be making a star wars film so the assum the assumption is that it's going to be a continuation of either the mandalorian or ahsoka or it could be a crossover between the two and we're going to have this big avenger style star wars <laughs> movie or uh we're going to get a, a second season of ahsoka i wouldn't mind either one or both to be <laughs> to be greedy with it but I am ex I, I am enjoying this show so much. I, even with this episode being dialogue heavy, more story heavy, it was fun to watch. It it had everything I wanted in a Star Wars property. And so, I mean, I have yet to watch a down episode of this series. I mean, if I had one gripe, one gripe and i'm just fishing here because it's really not a gripe but the reality is if i had a problem it's the fact that we didn't get much ahsoka in an ahsoka show <laughs> this episode but we didn't need her we didn't need her that's how awesome this show is it, we got a little taste of her in the beginning just to just to make it clear that this is an ahsoka show and then we went on to the supporting characters, Sabine, Morgan Elsbeth, Bailey, Shin, Thrawn, Ezra Bridger. D there you have it. That's all you need to know. And now, she was mentioned throughout the episode when the Night Sisters told Thrawn that uh, they feel the presence of a Jedi approaching. And so he immediately knew it was Ahsoka. He knew it was Ahsoka. And this is where he tells uh, Morgan that uh, she sh should have made sure she was dead. And Morgan is telling him, like, look, uh, uh, Balin told me that he killed her. He threw her off the cliff or whatever, whatever. And, you know, Thrawn, being Thrawn, he's like, well, did you check? <laughs> you know, <laughs> did you check and see? And so I thought that was a nice scene. And, and it was, it, it, Thrawn was basically planning doubt in Morgan's mind that she don't know these mercenaries as well as she do because he told her like he used to be a Jedi you know there's there's a, there's probably a motive there and so it's it's something man it's going to be interesting 
going forward to see exactly how this will play out. I'm enjoying this show, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it is bringing up so much uh, Star Wars joy in my heart. I've never been excited for a Tuesday night than I am when I prepare to watch Ahsoka. It, I can't remember the last time a TV show came on that I ran home to watch. Uh, maybe Game of Thrones. Maybe Game of Thrones was is the last time that I had to be home Sunday night to watch that. You know, I couldn't wait for it to be on HBO Max or something the next day and all. I needed to see this when it dropped. And this is the same feeling every Tuesday night when the episode drops. I'm dropping everything to watch it. I would like to know how are you enjoying Ahsoka thus far these six episodes in. Let me know by email. You can email the show kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. Also look me up on all social media platforms. Just look up the KB Radio Network as well as YouTube. Subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube and like this video. Don't forget about the five stars the reviews and sharing this show if you're listening on apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the kb radio network everyone thank you for joining me for this recap of star wars ahsoka season one part six far far away can't wait to speak to you next week which isn't far far away when we review part seven the penultimate episode of season one until then i want you all to know that i love you continue to love everyone and until we speak again you all be blessed